girls talk about is girls and cash these times they ain't even got none it ain't hard to see when i step in the dance to the party's lit and it gets done turn up the music can we jump in all the people around just jump in turn up the music can we jump in all the people around just jump in bounce some vibe get the drink and we dance all night vibe and bounce get the drink and the girl on the couch bounce some vibe get the drink and we dance all night vibe and bounce get the drink and the girl on the couch first off Introduce yourself, your name, and where you're from, bro. Uh, my name is Handles TDMB, and I'm from West London, man. Yeah, where in West, bro? Um, well, I'm in between like Acton, Chiswick, Bush. Like, I'm literally right in between those three places. So I just I the wow. whole West. Yeah, I'm about, man. <laughs> That's my home. Love that. Love that. How would you describe? I mean, obviously, you've seen quite a breadth of West End, but how mm -hmm. would you describe where you grew up in West? Um. West is best, man. Like where I live is like, it's like the UK version of Harlem. Really, everyone's fly, bad bitches. It's nice restaurants to have lunch. You know, West is best, man. West is nice, right? <laughs> God, like obviously everywhere's got its got I'm like near South Park, and that we got our estate. Everyone's got their, this dark side to every coin, but West is overall a nice place to grow up, man. No, no, nice. I like the fact you uh, embrace that as well. Mm-hmm. You know, um, how would you describe yourself in one word, bro? Um, the name of my debut EP, Sui Genre, which is Latin for unique, okay. Latin for of its own kind. Sick, sick, sick. And how would you say your friends and family would describe you? Mad. That's what I think. I think that's the. <laughs> I think that's the word they'll use. He's crazy because I like to travel. I go, you know, you'll see me in all kinds of different places. So he's a madman. That's what they would say, but in a, in, a, in a nice way though, you get me, in, a, in the most positive way, <laughs> in the most positive sense, like, possible. No, I like that, I said a madman, but no, it's all good. Facts. <laughs> right. So, for real. Uh, where'd you go to school, bro? I went to school in Chiswick, man, I went to Chiswick Community School, man. Yeah, yeah. how was that? School was great, and you know what, it's like, I wish I could go back to school, I wish I could go back to school now, with this mentality that I have now, but school was amazing, man. I was like, I was one of those kids at school that you would see with all different types of groups every day. I didn't really have like a said group. So one day I'll be with the girls, one day I'll be with the nerds, one day I'll be with the man there, with the football man, with the basketball man. Like, I was I was a floater, do you know what I mean? Mm. Spends mm. with everyone kind of thing. Sick, sick, sick. That's the best way to be, man. Yeah, Wonderful man. experience. Exactly. All right, cool. What first got you into making music? Um. Well, when I was in school, actually, for my work experience, I was uh, I worked in MTV um, when it was in Camden. And, you know, going in there, I remember my first day, I've gone in there, church shoes, trousers, shirt, walked in and everyone's in hoodies and jeans and trainers. I was like, oh, wow, what is this? This is this is a workplace? Like, you know what I mean? Like, got to work with Trevor Nelson on the Lick Show, like, really got to see the industry from behind the scenes. So at that age, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be in front of the camera, but I just didn't know what I was what what I wanted to do in front of the camera. So I was like between like presenting and doing music. And then once I kind of went to college and I was studying media in college because that kind of just put me on the media route. You know, that's when I really kind of was like following, you know, Dipsets, D Block, Styles P, Fifty Cent, and then you know I came across Max B. And once I started listening to Max B, bro, that's when I knew I could rap because, don't get me wrong, man grew up a lot around, around a lot of badness and wickedness, but that just wasn't the image for me. It just, you know, like the, the kind of credentials that come with it, it wasn't something that I aspired to. But once I realised you could be a pimp, once I realised you can get bitches, bro, and rap, and it's cool, Max B was like, yeah, that's what I... Yeah, the wave began. <laughs> That's when the wave began. Like, oh, you could, I can be me and do that. Saying that, nah, nah, cool, cool. It's, it's a rap after that. <laughs> so it's kind of what made me rap, bro. And it's been a rap ever since, literally. I love that. I love that. I feel, I feel like the next question is slightly answered as well. But what, what would you say is the kind of music you make, like the genre? So. My genre, like, I like to call myself an artist. I don't even really like to put myself in a genre because I like to make all kinds of music. I'm a 90s kid, bro, so I grew up listening to everything. You know, I'm a, I like might have a rocky kind of sounding track. I might have a housey kind of sounding track. My main genre, if I had to put myself in a box, would obviously be hip-hop and R&B. 
Um, but yeah, man, I'm more of like a 90s, fresh 90s hip hop and R&B kind of style. Like, you know, my last project was R&B, one before that was hip hop. So like I mix and blend, like, I just like to say, I'll, I'll say I'm a vibes artist. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make a new genre of vibes. What kind of music do you make vibes? That's what I mean. I make vibes. Bro. That's great. Vibes. Mm. Love that. Love that. Love that. And what would you say your creative process is then? So first, my my creative process is first experience. Like I like to live, bro. I like to travel. I like to do things because you know rap is rhythm and poetry. At the end of the day, I don't know if a lot of people know that, but you know poets give you like a window, a creative window into their life. That's what it's about. So if I'm not experiencing life, it's hard for me to create. So I try to do as much as I possibly can in my days and just experience different things. And then once I've got something I want to talk about, I'll find a producer, someone that I might be working with, or I'll just scout online because I'm the type of person I like to buy my beats that, you know what I'm saying? I like to get the lease and get it out of the way. So support the community, you know, pay, pay the hand forward. And then it takes me about 10 minutes. I don't write, you know what I mean? I just go, you know, I've got my own studio set up. So I'll just kind of just find a melody that I like to sit in and find a, find a vibe basically. And then I'll just put the words in at the end type of thing. You know what I mean? So it makes sense. That's pretty much my creative process. It's pretty basic and I knock out a lot of tunes pretty fast because of it. And they just seem to come out really well, you know? So that's the process. Oh, great, 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 great. And um, have you worked with any other artists? So currently, I'm on my J. Cole vibes. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hundred percent chart and artist ratio with no features, four track EPs. So I have done features. A lot of the features that I've done are maybe on like a lot of American artists as well, because like, I've got an influence over in New York as well. That's kind of like one of my main places that I go to to promote my music because I've got a lot of uh, traction over there. But um, I've collaborated with people like Mook, Sean Stacks, Fonzie from the UK. Um, yeah, man, I've done, I've done like unknown features, features you wouldn't really know about, do you know what I mean? Because for me right now, all the stuff that I've released has just been my own independent project. Three independent EPs all charting, top five and above on iTunes, so it's like, I'm on my J. Cole vibe right now, you man can't get on my songs right now, do you know what I mean? So, I'm obviously going to be looking to do features, in, you know, in the near future, but right now I'm on a, I'm on a roll kind of thing, so I don't really need to at the moment. So the formula's working, right? Change it. Yeah, exactly. If it's not broke, don't fix it, man. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's good to hear as well, bro. Well done, man. For real, for real. So... Obviously, you've touched on J. Cole a little bit in that. Um, but I'm just wondering, are there any artists that inspire you? Um, to be honest, I can't really say one particular artist inspires me. I'm kind of inspired by like the whole scene, you know what I mean? Because where I'm at in my music career now, I've had kind of my own success in a sense. So it's like now I'm more inspired by seeing how the scene develops, you know what I mean? And seeing how people are creating different sounds and creating different fan bases and just just watching it unfold, you know what I mean? Like that's kind of what inspires me, like to keep doing my own thing, to add to that, you know what I mean? Versus replicate what somebody's already doing, you know what I mean? So of course there's a lot of people that inspire me. If I had to mention somebody off the top of my head that inspires me in a sense of Numbers, it would probably be somebody you most people wouldn't expect. Um, KSI, bro. And the reason why I say KSI is because he's demonstrating that it's not what you're doing, it's how you're doing. Do you see what I'm saying? Because he can rap, he can do shows, he does, he does all the other things successfully though. You see what I'm saying? And that's due to being consistent into one thing that he loved in the beginning. So that is what kind of, if I had to pick a name, you know, if I had to do a feature with somebody, I'll say KSI and let's do a feature. Yeah, I mean, let me, let me diss some of your YouTube ops for you in style and vibes. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, you're gonna see you in club soon, yeah? Yeah, you you're might see boxing soon, you yeah. Might listen, you might see me in the ring, might be coming out for the intro, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're getting, we're touching on server artists at the moment, but have you got like a top five artist list? So my top five artist list would be number one, coming in strong at number one is Michael Jackson. Jeez, come on. That's the number one artist. Like if you, if you, if you want to be a pimp juice artist, for real, you want to be the vibesy, vibesy artist. Like if you don't have an MJ inspiration, you, you're lacking, bro. Bro, what's like, the village genius? Like, what? Like, she's just on gold. What? Come man, on, man, I have to listen to. Remember, he's Caribbean. Just play Michael G- Michael Jackson's music again with a Caribbean accent and patois, and you'll understand what's really being said. Because I don't think people really understand. People were bitches was fainting at the nigga shows. Okay, in numbers, like they had a whole team for just the people that was going faint. Like this, <laughs> like this is the kind of pimp juice niggas have forgotten about. So number one, Michael Jackson. Number two, Biggie. Like, you know that whole question, Tupac or Biggie? Like, obviously they're two different artists. I respect them both. But for me, Biggie just had the, the, the vibes. He had the juice. Mm. Like, juicy, juicy fruit. Like, come on. He, he, t- he told me, you know what I'm saying? Biggie, number two. Um, number three. Number three, Andre 3000. You know, three stacks at number three. Like, I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't, I don't even need to say that else after that. Uh, four and five. Fuck. See, this is where it gets techie. Four and five gets techie because they like to change sometimes. But right now, Kendrick Lamar is definitely in my top is, is in my top five. And Max B has to be in my top five. But then, you know, you don't want to miss out people like Tupac, Snoop. And all the other greats, Nas and Jay Z and Kanye's up there as well. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a there's a lot of special artists. But if I had to pick those, it would be like, yeah, Michael Jackson, Biggie, Free Stacks, Max B, Kendrick Lamar. Okay, that's my top okay. five. I'm gonna try and flip it on you, dude. Yeah, it's a good top five. I actually like the top five. I can't lie. But if you were to stick to the UK, if I stick to the UK. It would have to be number one me. That's if I have to go to the UK. <sighs> number two, number two, Swiss. Cry. Oh, oh, Jesus. Jesus. Uh, number three, Skeppy. That's my dog. Um, number four, Wretch is Illy. Like you just have to give Reg his flowers. Um, number five. Eesh. That's tough, man. I'm going to go with... Because I'm just going on personal favourites here. Mm, of course. Of I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Giggs, man. Giggs got to be in my top five. He has to be. And I know, like, I feel like I've missed people, but, yeah. It will happen, it will happen. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? King Cruel, like, man, I remember, it's, like, it's his bare artists in the UK that are illy, Bonzi, like, what? Nah, bro, it's crazy. El Martin is mad people. It's crazy still. But, yeah, if I had to say something, that would be my top five, yeah. Sick, 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 sick. Um, now, this is a question that you can apply it to music, you can apply it to life, right? Mm-hmm. But... What would you say is one of the biggest obstacles you've had to face so far? Consistency. The man in the mirror, bro. That's probably the biggest obstacle out of everything. It's staying completely consistent to the mission. Not getting distracted by nothing. And that's what I feel that's what everybody's working on. But it's like, that's probably the hardest thing. It's just staying consistent. Doing the same thing over and over and over again. Every single day with the same effort, with the same energy. That is the real, real fucking hurdle, fam. Because me going to the studio, when I'm in the studio, I'm in the studio. I'm going to come out with something great. When I'm performing, I'm in performing mode. I'm not even thinking about it. But keeping that energy going is what's mad hard. And I think that's where a lot of people fail at, is just staying consistent. Without seeing, you know, amazing results all the time. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you're going to see some big wins, and sometimes it's just going to act like nothing ain't happening. 
but staying consistent that's the hard part that's, that's the biggest obstacle for me is staying consistent mm, mm. real real man some real truths in there as well um it's another obstacle that people go through have you ever been to prison no nah, i've never been to prison i've been to a cell so many arrested. times i've been arrested a few times but um i've never been to jail now and i don't plan to not to take away anyone that's you know been caught up in that situation but that's not on my part and i try to avoid that as best as i possibly can you know what i'm saying because i've been around people who have been you know what i mean a lot of my friends have been caught up in that and i've learned from their mistakes do you know what i mean so but i've been in the cell that was enough for me yeah